Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Shalini Prasad and I welcome you to discussion of chapter 7 of psychology textbook of class 12 that is social influence and group processes. You will be learning about influence of group on individual behavior, social loafing, conformity, compliance and obedience. This will be your second part. Now influence of group on individual behavior. We have seen that groups are powerful as they are able to influence the behavior of individuals. What is the nature of this influence? What impact does the presence of others have on our performance? We will discuss two situations. That is an individual performing an activity alone in the presence of others, we call this notion as social facilitation. Secondly, an individual performing an activity along with the others as part of a larger group and we call it as social loafing. Since social facilitation has been briefly discussed in your previous chapters of 6, and others, we would try to understand the phenomena of social loafing in this section. Let us talk about social loafing. What is it? Social facilitation researchers has suggested that the presence of others leads to arousal and can motivate individuals to enhance their performance if they are already good at solving something. This enhancement occurs when the person's efforts are individually evaluated. What would happen if efforts of an individual in the group are pooled so that you look at the performance of the group as a whole? Do you know what often happens? It has been found that individuals work less hard in the group than they do while performing it alone. This points us a phenomena referred to as social loafing. Social loafing is the reduction of the individual's effort when working on a collective task. That is one in which a output are pooled with those of other group members. An example of such a task is the game of tug of war. It is not possible for you to identify how much force each member of the team has been exerting. Such situations give opportunities to the group members to relax and become the free riders. This phenomena has been demonstrated in many experiments by Latini and his associates who asked the group of male students to clap or cheer as loudly as possible as the experimenters were interested in knowing how many noise people can make in a social setting. So they varied the group size, individuals were either alone or in groups of 2, 4 and 6. This results the study that showed that although the total amount of the noise rose up as size increased, the amount of the noise produced by each participant dropped. In other words, each participant put in the less effort as the group size increased. Now my dear learners, why does social loafing occurs? The explanations offers various reasons to it. Group members feel less responsible for the overall task being performed and therefore exert less effort. Motivation of members decreases because they realize that their contributions will not be evaluated on the individual basis. The performance of the group is not to be compared with other group members. So there is an improper coordination or virtually no coordination among the members. So belonging to the group's members of the same group is not important for the members. It is only just an aggregate of the individuals. Now can we reduce the social loafing? Yes, we can definitely reduce it by making the efforts of each person identifiable, increasing the pressure to work hard, that is making group members committed to successful task performance. We can also do it by increasing the apparent importance or the value of the task, making people feel 
that their individual contribution is equally very, very important. Next, strengthening group cohesiveness, which increases the motivation for successful group outcome. Now, let us talk about a concept called as a group polarization. We all know that important decisions are taken by groups and not by individuals alone. For example, a decision is to be taken whether a school has to be established in a village. Such a decision has to be a group decision. Now, we have also seen that when groups take decisions, there is a fear that the phenomena of group think may sometimes occur. Groups show another tendency referred as a group polarization. It has been found that groups are more likely to take extreme decisions and individuals alone. Suppose there is an employee who has been caught taking bribe or engaging in some other unethical act. His colleagues are asked to decide on what punishment he or she should be given. They may let him go scot-free or decide to terminate his services. Instead of imposing a punishment, which may be commensurate with the unethical act had engaged in. Whatever the initial position in the group, this position becomes more stronger as a result of discussions in the group. The strengthening of the group initial position as a result of group's interaction and discussion is referred as group polarization. This may be sometimes have dangerous repercussions as groups may take extreme positions that is from very weak to a very strong decision. Why does group polarization occur? Let us take an example where the capital punishment should be there. Suppose you favor capital punishment for heinous crimes. What would happen if you were interacting with and discussing this issue with the like-minded people? After this interaction, your views may become stronger. The firm conviction is because of the following three reasons. Why? It is in the company of the like-minded people, you are likely to hear newer arguments favoring your viewpoints. This will make you more favorable towards the capital punishment. So, when you find others also favoring capital punishment, you feel that this view is validated by the people. This is a sort of bandwagon effect. Now, when you find people having similar views, you are likely to perceive them as in-group. You start identifying with this group, begin showing conformity and as a consequence, your views become more strengthened. Let us talk about the another interesting concepts called as conformity, compliance and obedience. Groups and individuals, they exert influence on us. This influence may force us to change our behaviors in a particular direction. The term social influence refers to those processes whereby our attitudes and behaviors are influenced by the real or imagined presence of other people. Throughout the day, you may have encountered a number of situations where others have tried to influence you and make you think in the ways they want. Your parents, your teachers, your friends, radio and television commercials creates one or the other kind of social influence. Social influence is a part of our life. In some situations, social influence on us is very strong as a result of which we tend to do things which we otherwise would have not done. On the other occasions, we are able to delay this influence of others and may even influence them to adopt our own viewpoint. This section describes three important group influence processes that is conformity, compliance and obedience. Imagine the following situation in your school. Some of your friends come to you with the letter to protest against the rule that has been recently announced, banning use of mobile phones in the school. Personally, you will find that or you will believe that, that the rule is very, very sensible and should be enforced. But 
you also know that if you do not sign the letter, you will lose many friends and get a bad name for keeping them or a student unity. What would you do in such a situation? What would you think most people of your age would do? If your answer is that you would agree to sign the letter, you have expressed a form of social influence called conformity, which means behaving according to the group norms, the expectations of other group members. That is, you are asking the other group members to be with you. The persons who do not conform, they are definitely called as deviants or non-conformist. They tend to get notice more than those who do conform. Kelman distinguished three forms of social influence, compliance, identification and internalization. In compliance, there are external conditions that force the individuals to accept the influence of the significant others. Compliance also refers to behaving in a particular way in response to a request made by the someone. Thus, in the example described above, you may sign the letter with the thought that you were accepting the request, not because you agree with other students, but because you have been requested to do so by a significant member. This would be the case of compliance, also called as external or public conformity. Compliance could also take place even without a norm. For example, a member of community group comes to you for a notion called as clean environment. They request you to put a sticker on your bike that would say, say no to plastic bags. You agree to do so, not because of the group norm or even because you personally believe in banning the plastic bags, but because you see no harm or problem in putting that such a sticker on your bike. At the same time, you find it easier to say yes rather than no to the harmless and eventually meaningful request. Next is the identification according to Kalman, which refers to influence processes based on agreement seeking or identity seeking. Internalization on the other hand is a process of information seeking. Yet another form of behavior you must have come across is called as obedience. A distinguishing feature of obedience is that such behavior is a response to a person in authority. In the example given above, you may sign the letter more readily if the senior teacher or the student leader asks you to do so. In such a situation, you are not necessarily following the group norm, but rather carrying out an instruction or an order. The presence of an authority figure immediately makes this behavior different from conformity. For instance, you may stop talking loudly in the classroom when the teacher asks you to keep quiet but not when your classmate tells you to do the same thing. We can see that there are some similarities also between conformity, compliance and obedience, but there are also some differences. All these indicate the influence of others on the individual's behavior. Out of the three, obedience is the most direct and explicit form of social influence whereas compliance is less direct than the obedience because someone has requested and thus you comply here just here because the probability of refusal is there. Conformity is the most indirect form. You are conforming because you do not want to deviate from the norms. Let us talk more in detail about the conformity. When you talk about conformity, as we say, it is a most indirect form of social influence. Tendency to follow norms is natural and spontaneous. Norms are basically unwritten, informal rules. They provide information about what is expected from people in a situation, allows the groups to function smoothly. People feel very uncomfortable if 
they are called as different, it could lead to dislike or disapproval or some form of social punishment that is they are also called as deviants or the non-conformist. Following norms is the easiest way to avoid that disapproval. So, norms they are reflecting the views and beliefs of majority, feels that majority is likely to be right. So, we always feel that majority is always right. So, now, these are being proposed by number of experiments by Sheriff that is autokinetic effect and ash that is ash technique that is condition determining the extent of conformity degree of conformity it is determined by situation specific factors. Let us talk about the determinants of conformity. The above all the first one is the size of the group. More conformity is found when the group size is small. The size of the minority now larger the minorities lesser the conformity more is the deviance nature of the task more conformity where there is an objective questions public or private expression of the behavior more conformity in public and less conformity in private expression last that is a personality conforming personalities that is tendency to change behavior according to what others do others are independent they do not look the norms to decide how to behave in a situation. So, it has been found that highly intelligent people are more confident. Let us talk about the conformity why does it takes place sometimes it takes place because of the informational influence that results from accepting the evidence not reality rational conformity they are learning through observing others actions. Other reason is the normative influence, it is based on the desire to be accepted and admired, conform because deviation could lead to rejection and non-acceptance. Majority determines final decision, but at times if minority is firm and uncompromising, it doubts on the majority's minds. Next very interesting topic is compliance, extreme conditions forcing the person to accept the influence of the significant others and behave in a particular way in response to a request from other person or the group even in the absence of norms. Why do we comply? The easier way out of the situation that is by asking people because they are polite. Now, there are a number of factors for compliance. What are these factors? Let us check it out. The first factor is foot in the door technique, being or making small request that one cannot refuse, move to the bigger ones once you comply with the first request feels uncomfortable refusing the second one. You must have observed the doorman or the salesman when they come to you for asking certain things. First, they give you some gifts and which you cannot deny or you accept it readily, but you cannot deny the second one as they come to you. Second comes is the deadline technique. A last date is announced until an offer is available, make people hurry up so they cannot miss it, this opportunity. More is that is the only actually which is required, it is usually granted. Last is door in the face technique being with the large request and when this is refused move on into making a smaller request. The one actually required it is usually granted. Next interesting topic coming to our way is obedience. Obedience it refers to the response to a person in authority. It as it said direct and explicit form of the social influence. Someone has requested and you complied if disobeyed one is likely to get punishment from the people in authority. So, thus one has to obey as people in authority have effective ways and means to get it enforced. Now, in Milgram's experiment it was said that even ordinary people are willing to harm innocent people if ordered by someone in authority. Why do people obey after knowing the effects? Number one, they feel that they are not responsible for their own actions and 
that they are simply carrying out the orders from an authority. Number two, authority is very powerful and possesses signs, symbols that is very, very difficult for us to resist. Number three, authority increases the commands from the lesser to the greater levels. Initially, the obedience binds, follows for the commitment and once you obey the small orders, you start obeying bigger orders as you feel committed to the authority. Lastly, events move at such a fast speed that there is no time to think, one just obeys the orders. Dear learners, you must have felt this in the situation of riots. Hope you have enjoyed the entire session wholeheartedly because we did so many interesting topics like social loafing. You understood what are the major reasons for social loafing, how you can reduce social loafing. We also try to understand the concepts that is conformity, compliance and obedience. We also try to make some differences as well as the similarities in all these three concepts. Thank you.